Lobbyists, the original influencers. Lobbying isn't actually that bad. It's meant to be how we influence the policies or decisions of our government. But in reality, it's a playground for companies and the super rich to buy laws and change legislations that might slow down their potentially questionable business practices. So much like being shown a Facebook status from 2009, you're not going to like what you're about to see. Here's everything that big tech lobbied for in 2022. Part one, my caveat. It can be tricky to figure out how much an organization specifically spent. The law only requires lobbyists to report the amount they were paid for federal lobbying each quarter, and it's rounded up to the nearest $10,000. If it is less than $3,000 in a given quarter, or less than $13,000 for an organization with in-house lobbyists, they don't have to disclose it at all. So please bear in mind when I say that Company X spent a million dollars lobbying the deaths of babies, we don't know if half that money was the fee for the lobbyist and the other half went to the government offices, or if the breakdown was near a 60-40. So as I said last time I was in the return section of an Amazon warehouse, there's a lot to unpack here and I'll do my best, but I can't promise to understand everything. Part two, let's start with Alphabet. Alphabet are the daddy company of Google and all of its acquisitions. Open secrets don't break down how much each company spent on lobbying, but there are some clear patterns. For example, Google spent just shy of $8.2 million on lobbying. And we can see that pretty much that same number was spent on internet issues within their industry breakdown, especially when you add in the $240,000 Google Cloud spent. Most of that money was spent trying to influence bills around trust, privacy, online choice, and open markets, with a dash of workers' rights thrown in for good measure. I'm sure it's just a coincidence that Joe Biden has said that he wants to challenge big tech companies on their business practices and break up internet monopolies. Here's hoping the challenge doesn't come in the form of a fine that's so meaningless it could rival Ross in Series 5 of Friends. Their self-driving car company, Waymo, spent about a million dollars. And would you believe it, they spent the same number on automotive lobbying. Coincidence? I think not. Again, it doesn't say if they would be for or against tighter regulations on self-driving cars and the technologies that run them, but I think they would be. And I'm not just saying that because I'm uploading this video to YouTube which is owned by Google. Most of the amendments they wanted basically allowed them to test their cars on public streets without any repercussions if something went wrong. And why wouldn't they want to get rid of this? If accountability doesn't spark joy in your life, you need to get rid of it. Their drone company, Wing Aviation, spent $150,000 on lobbying air travel issues. Basically, now hold on to your hats. They want their drones to run free of human interference to deliver stuff to us. Part three, ByteDance and TikTok. ByteDance spent 4.2 million on lobbying in 2022. Shock horror, all of this went on internet related bills, making them the fourth highest lobbying company in that sector. But what would a little dancing app even need to lobby? Well, me and a hat. It turns out they put a chunk of change into the comedically titled No TikTok on Government Devices Act, which does exactly what it says on the tin. TikTok wants to make sure that everyone from government officials to army men have free access to their app. Whereas the commissioner for the federal regulation says the app needs to be banned because the Chinese government can use that data to track individual citizens. Talk about a conspiracy nut job. It's not that deep, bro. Other bills they took issue with include the Children and Teens Online Privacy Protection Act and the Kids Online Safety Act, which frankly was on my bingo card from the start. This bill would prohibit apps aimed at kids from advertising to children. Given how many more under 30s have signed up to TikTok this year and that their ad revenue is up, You'd think they'd love the challenge of being legislated, but hey, turns out that's not their vibe. Part four, Amazon. Amazon and all of its subsidiaries spent $16 million on lobbying in 2022, the highest amount of any internet company. 150,000 of this went on retail and the rest went on internet bills, much like the rest of us. In recent years, Amazon has killed off or undermined privacy protections in more than three dozen bills across 25 American states. But look, People can change. Daddy Bezos gave away a bunch of money last year. He's not improved the working conditions or wages of the employees, but baby steps, man. We don't know for sure that the lobbying budget, which was spent on 17 antitrust amendments and 14 consumer rights issues, wasn't helping customers feel safer online. And they did publish a blog recently talking about their increased privacy in Alexa devices. Uh oh.
between researching this video and making this video, they appear to have taken that blog down. But we do get to meet the dogs of Amazon, which is just as good as having our privacy. I mean, look how cute she is. Simon, focus. Fine. I'll finish this video, but afterwards I'm watching all the dogs. And before you jump to conclusions, Amazon did lobby three tax issues last year, but Bezos tweeted that he's for a tax hike. And why would he lie on Twitter? I'm pretty sure that's illegal. Amazon also lobbied for issues related to labor unions, health issues, immigration, pharmaceuticals, civil rights, and copyrights. But I can't think of a single negative reason why they would do that. And finally, Amazon had a handful of issues with the George Floyd Justice in Policing Act of 2021. All of these were related to data and facial recognition cameras. Basically, Amazon likes this bill, but only if it doesn't get in the way of them expanding their use of facial recognition cameras in their own surveillance network and ring doorbells. That was like a verbal cold shower. I'm tempted to do a video on private versus government surveillance. If you want me to do that, Put it in the comments below. Part five, Meta. Meta spent $15.5 million on lobbying in 2022. That's the second highest amount of any company in the world, and it was almost a world record. But they failed to beat the 19 million, which was spent in 2020 by Facebook, whoever they are. $19 million. To put that in perspective, that's about $8.50 in today's money. Shockingly, all of that money went towards internet-related issues. They spent the second highest amount to lobby the internet industry just behind a little bookshop called Amazon. Most of that money was spent on issues relating to content moderation, privacy, online advertising, and platform transparency. I'm sure there's nothing to worry about here. Meta's biggest beef seems to be with the American Innovation and Choice Online Act, where they've asked for 12 revisions. This bill aims to stop big tech from prioritizing their own products or services, basically making it hard for them to create an ecosystem that keeps us locked into their monopolies. All we know is that Facebook spent $10,485,000 to get these amendments. Could Facebook be for or against this bill? Comment below. Spoiler, there's even a bill with the incredibly on the nose title, Ending Platform Monopolies Act, which Meta has a bunch of issues with as well. But don't let that impact your answers. Meta also lobbied for some amendments to the Health Misinformation Act of 2021, which aims to hold online services fully responsible for allowing misinformation to spread on their platforms. Most of Meta's revisions seem to be because it appears they don't want to take accountability for any misinformation posted on their platform which is very out of character for them. Even though journalists and the news claim their website helped misinformation on everything from COVID to elections to spread around the world. But be aware that Meta also has an entire landing page dedicated to its fight against misinformation. And they don't just let anyone put a page of propaganda on the internet to make advertisers feel more comfortable. So it must be true. Even though they paused their plans for Instagram for Kids, they lobbied against the Kids Act and the slightly more explicitly titled Kids Online Safety Act. Both of these would mean that any future apps they made that were aimed at children would need to not mishandle their data or attention, and if they did either of those things, they would be held fully accountable. Sidebar, whenever a legislation or an act is called something so overtly nice, it always sets off more red flags in me than a Russian parade, that it's actually something really fucked up. Whether it be called the Kids Online Safety Act or the Patriot Act, because inevitably it's been called that so we get headlines like human rights, LGBT organizations oppose Kids Online Safety Act. For the record, I don't like the Kids Online Safety Act because I don't believe most parents need an operating system that the government has a say in. I'm getting cancelled tomorrow. And finally, they seem to have at least eight issues with the American Data Privacy and Protection Act. This bill aims to restrict big tech companies' data collection and the use of that collected data. Now, given that Facebook claims that Apple's new privacy feature will cost them $12 billion, I'm pretty sure that this bill, which would stop them from being able to harvest any of our data without giving us an explicit opt-out option, isn't going to make it into their MySpace top eight. But hey, prove me wrong, Zuckerberg. The comments box exists for a reason. They've also put lobbying money into the labor, antitrust, and workplace legislation that's trying to give staff more rights and their ability to unionize. But who isn't these days? It's barely worth mentioning. There are two things I love about America. 
Firstly, the amount you're automating, and secondly, the fact you spell labor without a U. Oh, and banking. They want to amend the blockchain part of the Communications Decency Act, make it easier for them to bring out their own digital currency, Zuckbucks. It would also mean that they would remain a platform and not a publisher, so they wouldn't be responsible for any digital assets sold on their sites or apps. I'm starting to get the vibe that taking responsibility isn't really their jam. Part six, Netflix. Oh, you didn't think this was just gonna be social media sites, did you? Netflix spent a cool 1.2 million on lobbying in 2022, which brings them in at the eighth highest company trying to lobby internet related issues this year. Now it won't surprise you that most of the issues they lobbied for were related to innovation, online choice, and kids online safety. You'll remember the American Innovation and Choice Online Act from when we spoke about Meta three minutes ago. This bill would stop sites from prioritizing their own products, or in this case, TV shows and films from getting a competitive advantage. But the legislation that caught my eye was the Fair Contributions Act. This act taxes companies that benefit from infrastructure, like the internet, so they have to give back to help fund the maintenance, so that their company can exist in five years time. But given the recent drop in their share price and subscribers, they might not be around in the next 12 months, so maybe this is the least of their problems. Can't believe not one of these companies has fought to spunk 50 quid to lobby me to get me to make one good video about them. I've actually made a Patreon tier, which you can find linked below, but if you don't have any spare cash floating about, you can always like and subscribe to this channel. That's just as good as getting paid, right? Part seven, Spotify. Spending just over half a million dollars, Spotify comes in at number 17 on the list of companies trying to impact internet-related legislation. We had a few of the usual suspects, like that pesky act that doesn't allow them to prioritize their own podcasts and music. They also had an issue with the Open App Markets Act, which aimed to do the same thing, but for market providers like the Play Store and the App Store. Now, why would Spotify do that? Well, me and a hat, it could be because Spotify is launching its own audiobook store with original books on offer. Or it could be because they're fed up with how Google and Apple manipulate their algorithms to hide stuff from us. Personally, I think it's their way of sticking it to the man. After all, they've got this really cool anti-capitalist playlist, so lobbying the law seems the next logical step. Part eight, Space Karen's public blog, Twitter. Twitter spent just shy of a million dollars lobbying exclusively internet-related bills, the 14th highest amount of any company in that industry. Again, we're seeing the bills trying to protect kids and the bills trying to stop them from prioritizing their own content, which is odd because Elon tweeted that sorting out the child sexual abuse issue on Twitter is his number one priority. Maybe he just doesn't want those pesky regulators getting in the way of his foolproof plans. Or maybe they think they can do better than the Earn It Act of 2022, which specifically sets out a universal framework to prevent the online sexual exploitation of children. They also dislike the Social Media Privacy Protection and Consumer Right Acts of 2021, which would make them be more transparent with any data that they collect from us. And they're a big fan of monopolies, which given the new owner, makes sense. So there you have it. Everything that big tech lobbied for in 2022. I'd like to make this an annual video every January. So if you like it, like it. And don't forget to write below that you want me to make this an annual thing. Godspeed. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next week. Oh, come on. These dogs are adorable. This is, this is how Bezos gets me, right? I just want to watch these all day.